I'm working on a game called Star Dog. Not too dissimilar to Star Fox, where you pilot and control a ship moving forward constantly in space. Working on this is quite difficult because when I reach the end of the level, I have to go and escape and restart the whole scene. Or if I want to modify player movement and the player is always moving forward, it's a bit difficult to manage that. Godot has a concept of debug mode, which you can see in the title bar of your running game that we're in debug mode. When you run your game from the editor, it's in debug mode. But when you export it for your players to play, it's in release, it's a release build. So you can write code that checks if it's debug mode and add functionality that will assist you during the game development process to make it easier, faster, and generally improve the experience of making your game. So let's go ahead and add two debug things to this Stardock game. We'll add one that pauses the player movement so that we can easily modify the tilting of the player model. And we'll add one that has us reset the scene quickly using the keyboard key. And then at the end, I'll show you some other ideas that debug mode's good for. So we'll first start out by going to project settings. We'll go to input map and we'll add a new action. We'll call it debug reset scene. I prefix them with debug so that I know it's intended to only be used in debug mode. And I'm going to press the R key. So now debug reset scene is R. If you were testing it with your controller, you could also add a controller key or a controller button to reset to, but we'll close it for now. And then star dog is its own scene here, so you can see we've got the ship and we've got the level laid out, and there's a script attached to it. We'll go ahead and we'll do func input to check for every input event, and we'll say if os.isDebugBuild. os.isDebugBuild is the main way to check if we're in debug mode. So you just say if it's debug mode, and you can do double ampersand, or you can do this. I use the double ampersand out of habit from other languages. So we'll say if it's debug mode and event dot input or is action pressed. And then you just type debug reset scene, add your colon, and then we'll say get tree dot reload current scene and we can call deferred on it. So that'll run it at the end of the uh, current loop instead of right away to let anything running finish processing. So now we save that. If we just go ahead and run our current scene, Stardog launches, we're moving forward. If I press R, it resets the scene. This is really useful for certain types of games or maybe certain stages of your development. You can make resetting do all types of things. For me, this just resets the scene to the start, and that's pretty helpful, so you can go ahead and uh, test things out. So OS is debug build and you check for things as normal. Now for our player constantly moving forward, once there's no more asteroids to look at, it's kind of difficult to tell the player space in 3D because there's no reference points. So let's go ahead and make it so that we can pause our player movement with a hotkey. So we'll go ahead and we'll add one called uh, I'm going to prefix it with Stardog because this is a collection of different projects. We'll call it Stardog dot um, pog, Stardog debug pause player Z. So that's movement on the Z axis. We'll add it. And I'm going to make the one number pressing that pause that. So then in our player here, we have forward speed and there's a physics process. The main line we care about is here, velocity.z is equal to forward speed. So we'll do a couple things. We'll add a var called var forward pause is false. And then we'll say if forward paused, velocity.z is equal to zero. Else, we'll set the velocity z to the forward speed. And velocity pause defaults to false because we want the game to start with the player moving. And then just like in our other code, we'll do in the input callback, we'll say if os dot is debug build and input dot 
<clears throat> is action just press? We'll say star dog debug player Z. So if the debug player Z is pressed, we'll just toggle forward, we'll toggle forward pause. So we'll say forward pause is equal to the negated forward pause. So go ahead and save that. Now if we run the game again, and I press one, our player isn't moving, but I can still move along the X and Y axis, which that would be really helpful for refining player movement in those directions without having to worry about the player moving forward. If we go ahead and export the game and run a non-debug debug build, we'll go here, we'll go to Mac OS and we'll say export project and we'll call it, we'll just call it game.macOS, that's fine. Now we're going to uncheck export with debug because we don't want to export it in debug mode. I think if you clicked that and distributed a build, then it would have the debug settings. And that might be useful for maybe if you had testers or friends playing it and you wanted to have functionality to make it easier to run. Now, if we go ahead and run the program and we click on the star dog, if I press R, it doesn't reset. If I press one, it doesn't pause the player's movement. So that is the power of debug mode. You can conditionally code for aspects of game development that will make your life easier, but not be present to the players in the end. Now, let me give you another example of this in a different game, just so you have a sense of what it is. So I made this bullet heck game. It's a little prototype. Now, if I press zero, it toggles a UI that tells me some hotkeys for debug mode because it's easy to forget them but that's only visible in debug mode, and zero toggles that. Now, if I press one, that toggles invincibility, because sometimes when you're playing a game, it can be, you wanna test out the boss or something like that, let's say, and you don't wanna worry about dying, you just wanna play the game. So you can press one to toggle it. Now I'm not invincible, so if I get hit, I take damage. But if I don't, if I, if I toggle it on and I get hit, then I don't. So that's just one example. You could toggle invincibility, you could render hitboxes, you could do all sorts of things. Um, the, the options feel pretty limitless when you start doing it. And because you're just coding in your game normally, you can make it change the color of objects to represent that. You can display some text to make it clear it's debug mode. This could also be useful for recording clips for like a trailer or a video or something where you want to capture the essence of the gameplay, but not worry about dying. So yeah, lots of options for debug mode. Just to review it one more time, you just do os.isdebugbuild to check it. You can add input actions for it and code your game accordingly. It's been so helpful for me and hope it's helpful for you. All right, see ya.